is granted his parole. He's supposed to walk away from the New York State prison system on April 28th. Now, there's something called victims' impact statements that are supposed to take place. Malcolm is not only, was not only a world figure, he came from a large family on both sides. We got a call just a few minutes ago from the parole board in response to our letter to the governor of the state of New York, Governor Patterson, and he said, we didn't know where any of the family was. And we find that absolutely incredible. The little family is well known on Malcolm's, on Malcolm's father's side. His nephew, Ronell, is also a published author and with us almost every year when we do the annual pilgrimage to the gravesite. So we do not accept their excuse for not allowing those victims' impact statements to be heard. Now they are saying that if the family gets to them by April 28th, and I don't know what the rush is, it's been 45 years, if the family makes a statement by the, by the 28th, we can consider, we can possibly consider rescinding the order. But there are other questions. I'm not gonna go over the press statement that we made. Press, you got it. But there are other questions that need to be asked. Talmadge Haya did confess to what he did. We acknowledge that. It is a detailed confession where he names everybody who worked with him and who fired and took Malcolm's life away on February 21st. He did that out of personal guilt and to clear the other two men who were wrongly convicted and who were never released until they did their own time. The state of New York, the federal government of the United States did not act on Hayer's confession. That is a major question for us. Why? And, and we believe that the short answer is that if you climb up that apple tree, you're going to find a rotten hand of the United States government in complicit with someone having pulled those triggers and making sure that that happened and that those men all got away scot-free. And finally, we have to ask some other questions too. There are there's dozens of black men who made stellar commitments to our people's movement inspired by Malcolm X, angered over his assassination, trying to fill that void in, in our legacy and our movement, who became targets of what the FBI called the COINTELPRO operations of that time that deliberately set about destroying our movement. And that included assassination where possible. He did, they did that. And we have people who are still inside and when they come up for parole, you better believe those victims' impact statements are in place. And those are the reasons that are used to prevent those men who can prove their innocence and that they were framed by the government that keeps them from getting released. So we can talk about Robin Seth Hayes, who's been in prison since 1971. We can talk about Herman Bell, and, and we can uh, uh, talk about Jaleel Muta King, both who've just come up for parole and knocked down again. Men framed by the government, but the government is still not willing to admit its errors, its crimes, its wrongs, its hands in all this. We are not letting that go. When we found about what was happening with Hayes' release, we took that as an affront, another live attack another live attack on Malcolm's life and legacy. And when you fire on the legacy of Malcolm X, the Malcolm X Commemoration Committee in the tradition of self-defense is going to fire back. So, we got a call today from the parole board. And they said, well, just get us the families. Yeah, well, we're going to do that. But we're not going to stop there. We're not going to say that's not enough. Malcolm was a global figure. He was loved very much by his children, loved very much by his brothers and sisters, those that have gone on and those that are still here, loved very much by his nieces and his nephews. But he was also, being the champion of our people that he was and still is, he was loved by his people, not just in his beloved Harlem, but around the world. And we want everybody and to, to, to get the, that number and that email directed to the governor's office and say, no, it's not just the family that wants to be heard. The people for whom Malcolm gave his life want also to be heard. 
Well, and also, you heard him, we got some questions that we believe need to be answered. 